So hello, uh, welcome to Professor Snap, where we make A-level biology as simple as a cell. So today we will be looking at why animals need mass transportation. So we are literally starting with the basics. So this would be topic one on the Adexel A Snap specification. Um, so yeah, um, just before we continue, I just wanted to say that all the videos, including this one and the ones coming up, will be following the Adexel A Snap specification. So according to that, this would be topic one, but the topics are quite similar with other boards. So you can use this um, if you do AQA, Adexel B, OCR, and so on. So yeah, but then the order would be Adexel A snap. So first off, we have um, the circulatory system. So animal animals have circulatory system in which a heart pumps around the body. So insects have an open circulatory system with blood circulating in large open spaces. Most larger animals, including vertebrates, which are animals with a backbone, have a closed circulatory system with the blood contained within blood vessels. The blood makes a continuous journey out to the most distant parts of the body and back to the heart. Okay, so why is it that some animals have an open circulatory system while others have a closed circulatory system. Some organisms are small and don't really need a circulatory system, and diffusion would be more efficient. However, for larger organisms, um, the efficient transport of oxygen and nutrients can take place cannot take place through open circulatory system and are much more efficient with closed circulatory system, which is why larger animals have a closed circulatory system and smaller animals like not just animals but smaller organisms have the closed sorry, open circulatory system okay so moving on to um, single circulation so this is what we see in animals such as fish so the heart pumps deoxygenated blood to the gills where the blood takes in oxygen and becomes oxygenated the blood then travels on around the rest of the body of the fish, giving up oxygen to the body cells before returning to the heart. And then we have double circulation. This involves two circulatory systems. We see this in birds and animals as they need more oxygen. This is also because they need to maintain a constant body temperature. So as organisms with double circulation, they are usually not surrounded by water. This means it takes a lot more energy for the cells, um, which require more oxygen, more food, and resulting in a need for a double circulatory system. So, which is why animals that don't usually spend time in water, so land animals, land organisms, have a double circulatory system. So now moving on to systematic circulation and pulmonary circulation which are the two types of circulation you would see in an organism with double circulation. So systematic circulation carries oxygenated blood from the heart to the cells of the body where the oxygen is used and carries the deoxygenated blood back to the heart. Then you have pulmonary circulation which carries deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs to be oxygenated and carries the oxygenated blood back to the heart. So we have fully oxygenated blood can be sorry. Um, so fully oxygenated blood can be delivered quickly to the body tissues at a high pressure. The blood going through the blood vessels in the lungs are at a low pressure, so the vessels aren't damaged and gas exchange can occur. If this oxygenated blood at low pressure went straight into the big vessels that carry it around the body, it would move very very slowly. And it returns to the heart so the oxygenated blood can be pumped hard and center of the body at high pressure. This means it reaches all the tiny capillaries quickly between the body cells quickly and supplying oxygen for an active way of life. So these separate circulatory systems are needed in a double circulatory system to make sure that the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood cannot mix. So the tissues receive as much as oxygen as possible. So at the end of the day, whatever circulatory system an organism has, the main function it, it, it has is that 
all the tissues receive as much as oxygen as possible. So that's how it's adapted to. So some organisms, they need specific adaptations to increase their efficiency. And some organisms might not need that many adaptations. So they will have simpler systems in place, like you would see in insects with open circulatory system, for example. Okay. So that is all from Professor Snap today. Um, where